now we come to the representation suppose uh, i have a vector a uh, belonging to the uh, first vector space and i have uh, b an element of the second vector space so a tensor b is an element of uh, the tensor product vector space and uh, i can represent it by another column vector for example let's say i have uh, two vectors and uh, that would be represented by a column vector with a dimension of 4 uh, this is going to be in uh, n into m dimensional column vector similarly if i have one tensor zero one belongs to b this vector belongs to w so i'll have a uh, and that will be given by one can also define an inner product on the tensor product vector space and that's uh, rather easy i have an inner product of two vectors belonging to v tensor w vector space the inner product is just the product of uh, these two complex numbers uh, where uh, a and c belong both belong to v and uh, b and d both belong to uh, w so now if i have given two linear operators a is an element of the linear vector space v it's an operator and b is an operator in the linear vector space w uh, their tensor product uh, a tensor b is going to be an operator in v tensor w and as you know the set of operators form another vector space and uh, the action of a tensor b the operator on a given vector in v tensor w is specified by simply a tensor b uh, where i'm using a analogously and b in the bracket notation and in general any operator of the form a linear combination of operators ai and bj where ai is an operator on the vector space v and vj is an operator on the vector space w this is also a linear operator so it was essential for us to build this thing up uh, in order to understand entanglement because uh, entanglement is a very essential and a fundamental feature of quantum mechanics uh, 
when we have uh, quantum states on uh, composite vector spaces. So next, uh, we go to uh, the basics of entanglement.